So let's be real for a sec, Splatoon has had some stages that have just been total duds. We've all got some least favorite stages. If you've been around my channel for a bit, then you really know that I really can't stand a stage that shall not be named but may or may not rhyme with the words Yelp Chrome, regardless of my factually correct opinions on how much that map sucks. Today I wanted to take some time and talk about 7 stages that just really should not return in Splatoon 3, and why. It's already been confirmed that Nintendo plans on porting some older stages from the last two games into Splatoon 3, so if this ends up being a cold day in hell and Nintendo listens to community feedback, maybe they'll think twice about bringing some of these stages back. First off, we got Anchovy Games. Anchovy isn't exactly a bad stage, I think I'd just really rather have it not return in Splatoon 3, because it would burn more invested players out who've either put in like more than 300 hours in Splatoon 2, all the way up to people who've been hooked since the first game. Anchovy just really isn't a map that could fit into the outdoor chaotic aesthetic either, with Splatoon 3 in the direction that it's going. And a game development studio really just doesn't scream outdoors and crazy and chaotic to me. Plus, you know, like I said earlier, the map has been in the whole series, and it's kind of just burnt players out by now. Coming in right after that is New Albacore Hotel. I can honestly see this map returning, but I really don't want it to. It's just such a boring map in my opinion. It seriously just feels like a bog standard map. It's only got a few grades and some water in the middle of the map, and that's it. I don't know what Nintendo could possibly do to renovate this stage to make it something better than it is. It, it's really just a boring square with a few hazards sprinkled throughout the middle. There's like nothing creative about the stage like, ooh, sometimes you see some jellyfish swimming around every now and then somewhere else in the map. Like, it, it doesn't make the map suck less. It, it's just, it's not a bad map by itself, it's just like, it's so boring. And I guess we could have some like more boring stages every now and then, but this one just kills me. All right, right after that, we've got another least favorite map, Moray Towers. It makes literally no sense why the stage was chosen to come back in Splatoon 2. It makes even less sense that it was chosen to represent Splatoon and Smash. Moray Towers is one of the most hated maps in the Splatoon community for a very good reason. These goddamn ramps. They make navigating the map an absolute hassle, and if you don't have any other teammates to super jump to, and either way, it's not like these ramps do anything to protect you anyways. It's so much easier to just climb up these ramps than it is to go down them in any way available, so the ramps aren't really saving you from things like camping, rushing, or spawn killing. But because this map represents Splatoon and Smash, it's almost 100% sure that Nintendo's gonna bring these back for Splatoon 3. Right after that, we've got Camp Triggerfish. Triggerfish is just a map that irks a lot of the fan base. the main reason being tower control. If you have ever tried to play tower control on Triggerfish, then I think you know the pain of trying to take the tower underneath the map without trying to fall off. Most of the game can literally be spent contesting over these two spots where it's easy to fall into the water. And outside of that, it's super easy to spawn camp on Triggerfish. And since Nintendo's trying to make spawn camping less of an issue in Splatoon 3 with their whole new respawning system, it wouldn't make sense to bring back a map notorious for spawn camping in Splatoon 3. Next up, we've got Humpback Pump Track. Humpback is just straight up, in my opinion, not a fun map. The middle of the map somehow manages to be too big and too small at the same time with all its layers. The sides of the map are obnoxious and confusing. The map just has a special place in hell for how much of a hard time you can have while playing it. With all the swimming up walls, you'll need to do a lot to take the center platform. You force yourself to spend a lot of time being forced into a bad situation, not by the enemy team, but by the map design. I really can't stand this map in like any of the modes, so I'd definitely be okay if this map just decided to not come back. And Nintendo could easily just take it out and just say like an indoor skate park doesn't match up with the uh, outdoor wasteland aesthetic they're going with with uh, Splatsville. Number two, and this one's a little controversial for me, Starfish Main Stage. Starfish Main Stage is one of my favorite stages in all of the Splatoon series, but I'm going to try to play Devil's Advocate because a lot of players really do not like this stage. It's one of the smallest stages in the game which really limits a lot of weapon usage on this stage. It's never affected me a whole ton as a 52 gal main because I like to get up in those close quarters, but I can assume that a charger main would not like this map as much as I do. One thing I can definitely agree with on is that tower controls just really sucks here. Not really sure why, but I just cannot stand playing tower control here at all. Maybe if Nintendo like doubled the size of the map it would be better, but at that point it wouldn't really just be the same map. So at that point you might as well just like consider this map out of the picture for Splatoon 3 and just make something else and keep this one in Splatoon 2. Last, but absolutely, most certainly, not least, 
the worst map that Nintendo has ever created across 100 years of existing, Kelp Dome. Kelp Dome is a disaster. The grades that are supposed to be the map's biggest feature are the worst thing in this map. Most players either avoid the grates or are forced to take them for some reason, or aren't experienced enough with Splatoon to know how bad these grates are. Besides these stupid grates, this map is so confusing to navigate. It's very easy to get lost in Kelp Dome, which is really inconvenient on Rainmaker. And what's especially weird is how small this map is with how easy it is to get lost. Like, you think since it's not a big map, it would be easy to know where you are at all times. But no, this map is just like almost perfectly symmetrical, which can get really confusing, especially since the platforms that you spawn in on are higher up. So you can't even see from there what team color you're on. You could be in your own base thinking you're about to deliver the Rainmaker and then just totally find out you're in the wrong one. It sucks. Kill is also really bad for backliners because the only real place for high ground is the one tower in the middle which is incredibly easy to flank are these stupid freaking grates. Kelp Dome is an abomination of a map and if it never returns to the Splatoon series then maybe there is hope that humanity can persevere. But anyways I think that is it for the stages that I really do not want to see in Splatoon 3 again. If there's any more, I'll probably make a follow-up video, which uh, I think I can nag a little more about stages I really don't want to see anymore. But uh, are there any maps that you guys really liked that I didn't like that you guys want to see in Splatoon 3? Maybe you got some alternative points that you think that uh, some of these maps should be coming back in Splatoon 3 over? You know, as long as you don't have the opinion that Kelp Dome is a good map that should come back in Splatoon 3, I think you most certainly have a valid opinion on why some of these should come back. But wait, before you head out now, I have some important info to tell you. Did you know that only 15.1% of viewers that watch this channel are actually subscribed? If you aren't one of the 15%, which is a lot of you, probably you seeing this right now, I've got a reason for you to be subscribed. If you subscribe today, there's a slight chance that you will receive a handwritten letter from Jeff Bezos himself telling you that you are owed almost $5 million. Many will subscribe, none will win, but who knows, maybe you will. You won't know until you subscribe. Did I just make this whole thing up as well? The stupid things I've said before in other videos about random things you may or may not receive from subscribing me to make fun of other tropes that bigger YouTubers than me who have been really successful have done before in their past? Maybe, but that is besides the point right now. And there is really no way to know until you subscribe. But anyways, that is it from me gamers. I will see you all later. Uh, bye.